Welcome to the Fixing Comic Book Plot Holes. And I, I'm a little bit nervous because I got here a guest who is a dude that I have followed and looked up to and outright copied stuff from on more than one occasion. You what? For a long time. <laughs> for those who know him in his offline world, he is a humble karate instructor. But for all of us here on the online world, he's the guy behind one of the best and funniest YouTube channels out there. He's the creator of the fantastic Weekly Planet podcast. He's the editor of the excellent comicbookmovies.com. I have it on good information that he cured the bubonic plague. Correct. He single-handedly won the Second World War. He saved humanity by blowing up an asteroid with Ben Affleck. <laughs> and I think he dated Marilyn Monroe at one point. Probably. I'm yes, not sure. Before JFK, before JFK got in, so I got there first. Just so everybody <laughs> knows. Yeah. You guys know him. You love him. He is the one, the only, Mr. Sunday Movies. <laughs> Holy crap, man. That is like the best introduction I think I'll ever get, ever. That's amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> and then this won't live up to that, but I really do appreciate it, you know, building me right up and then people, and then this will just bottom out completely. Yeah, I did <laughs> That's think that. Like, <laughs> I was like... Yeah, yeah. No, that was great, man. Thank you very much. You're very, very kind. And you, you do amazing work as well, so I'm really happy to like, we could get together and do this. And Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You know what I mean, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so Mr. Sunday. Yes. So we got five very famous plot holes, so to speak, of comic books, stuff that people mm -hmm. always point out. And I've got uh, different fan theories that attempt to fill those. And you, with your extensive comic book knowledge, are the yeah. judge, the judge, jury, and executioner. Love it. This is, you've done a few of these, right? You did one with Milan Jeftik, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I love that one. <laughs> oh, so is this the second one? Is this number two? Yeah. All right, so I got to be better than him. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I like him a lot, man. That guy's great. I'm really surprised that more people aren't subscribed because he's a he's a legend. Yeah, well, you know, what? I think it's maybe he's just a little bit too original. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because yeah. one one of my um one of my friends like he's like, oh yeah, that was great, and I said, yeah, he's he's looking for more subscribers. He said, yeah, I think he's just too unique. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it'll come. It'll come. I'm sure with him. So plot hole number one, why can't anybody recognize that Clark Kent is Superman when all he has is a pair of glasses? This is the, the classic Superman plot hole. Absolutely. Since day one, I'm sure people were saying that, you know, in the 30s or whatever Superman started. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So you, you've got a theory, obviously. What, what's... Well, well, you know how it is, like the, the official line usually, mm. uh, Superman's performance of Clark Kent is just so enthralling yeah. that no one ever thinks of that. He's the Daniel Day-Lewis of superheroes. He just loses himself in this role and whatever, whatever. No, <laughs> no, it's really not. Because you look exactly like Superman. You're the same height. I think you maybe part your hair on the other side. But, and the glasses, but you look identical. Yeah, and it's ridiculous that nobody figures it out. Yeah, and like with his physique, there's not too many guys, I would imagine, walking around the office like that. Exactly, even if he wears exactly. Baggy clothes. That's right. You can't hide that under a suit or like an, under an ill-fitting suit. It's, it's impossible. Well, the theory is, both, both in the comic books and in the movie, Superman's been shown to have holograms. Yes. So the theory is, what he's done is he's made a hologram of himself so that as well as him putting on the performance of Clark Kent, whenever people start to wonder, hey, you know, I think he might be Superman, and he'll organize for like the hologram to like fly past the window or like fly in the window and stand next to him so that everybody can see Superman and Clark Kent in the same room. And from that point on, nobody would ever question that Clark Kent is Superman. That is a solid, solid Hell yeah. <laughs> theory. Absolutely. Because look, he has, there are a number of things in place as well in the comics that kind of try to answer that question and like there's there's a similar one to that i don't think there's that one exactly but like he, i know he has replica robots of himself yeah there's, i saw that in your last video yeah yeah there's one that where, was hilarious by the way your oh last thank video. you yeah it's gone really well like i was i'm really surprised how much people like that. i put up my gone girl review and nobody watches it but if i put up a <laughs> superman punching batman video like thousands of people watch it but anyway <laughs> But um, what was I going to say? Yeah, he's also like, there's one theory that he can actually, he used to be able to mold his face slightly and change it. Like that was a power that he had. There was one that whenever a photo was taken, he would move his face as Clark Kent at kind of super speed, but you wouldn't notice. So the photo would come out blurry. Like there's a whole lot of little things like that. Yeah. But, but I think that one is the most solid. Like if you have a guy, like 
come in and stand. Oh, there's also like he's got other people to dress up as Superman. Like Batman yeah. has dressed up as Superman and stood next to Superman. Like it's it's because really, nobody would recognize Bruce Wayne. No, that's no. right, exactly. Like why is <laughs> Bruce Wayne in a Superman outfit? Why don't you try and fly out of here if you can, Superman? You know, show us how much you can fly. But yeah, or like Martian Manhunter, he can just shape shift into Superman. Exactly. Yeah, and, exactly. You know, he can exactly. just imitate him. But I like that holograms one because that's that's proven. Like we've seen that in the movies. Like that happened in Superman two. He was in the Fortress of Solitude and all those other ones. And and that'd that'd be a really good way for them to like if they use that in the the Batman v Superman thing, especially if he was able to make a hologram that was like the Jor El one. Exactly. Because you know that could carry on a conversation. You're exactly and right. It was sort of sentient. Yeah. So if he created one of those for himself, yeah, and had it fly in the Daily Planet and like be like, hey, where's Lois? And everyone yeah. would see the two of them. Then he'd be set from then on. Everyone would be like, yeah, they look very similar, but we know they're not the same person. Dude, that is an absolutely genius idea. And that's why they should And that's why they should definitely steal that for the movie. Like if Jorel can put his entire personality into a weird little key or whatever, why can't a living yeah. person do that and have two copies of themselves? So it's a pass. Definitely. Plot hole number two. Right. Good old Spidey, his Spidey sense, his very vaguely defined yeah. Spidey sense. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Convenient, yeah, or, or, or inconvenient, depending how they write it, yeah. Well, it's like, supposed to be able to sense danger around him, but the amount of times where, like, in Amazing Spider-Man 2, he gets hit by a car, yeah. or he'll, like, walk into an ambush from an enemy, absolutely, or someone yeah. will jump in from behind, and you're like, Spidey sense, hello? Yeah, exactly, and sometimes he can, like, hear things or sense things like happening on the other side of the city. Yeah. Like a car crash or whatever. But then there's a scene in Spider-Man 2 where Peter Parker drops his book and the guy walks past and his bag just hits him in the face. Like, he's, <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. I don't understand it, but whatever. Yeah. Anyway, well, sorry, what's, yeah, what's your theory? Well, that's, that's kind of like giving that to a character is a little bit like Professor Xavier, you know, because mm. you kind of write yourself into a corner exactly. where like any situation he's in with that power, you're like, well, you should know. Yeah, they have to find ways around it. That's right. That's why in every movie, and me and Mason have talked about this. Professor he X gets, gets Xavier. Yeah, he gets <laughs> Professor X in every movie because in every X Men movie, they work out a way. I think except for First Class, where yeah. he's he, they write him out or they write his powers out because yeah. otherwise he'd just solve everything immediately. You know, it's not a movie. So, well, the uh, the theory for this one is it's Spidey sense. Okay, hmm? so it's a sense just like any other sense that you have, and you know how like. You know, you've got your sense of hearing, sure. but your brain filters out the background noise and just yeah. focuses on the important stuff. I like where this is going, yeah. So with his spidey sense, like it, it would filter out the stuff that's like, because there's always danger. Like, yeah. You know, just walking down the street, there's always danger. So it would mm. need to filter out all the stuff except the important stuff, because yep. otherwise he'd be walking down the street and it'd be like, don't get hit by that car. Yeah. You know, what? Don't get too close to that window. Someone could drive something out of it. And he'd be like, oh, shit. Absolutely. And it, it's like the Superman sitting in a cupboard in Man of Steel when he's a kid and you can hear everything and it's just too overwhelming or dead yeah. of his hearing. Like he has to sleep in a sound. Or, or, also, or also like as a sense, you know, with our five senses, if we're distracted, mm. you don't hear something or you don't notice something. Yeah. Or absolutely. I remember one time I went into a job interview and I was so nervous mm. that I walked like I stepped in dog crap outside and I walked <laughs> through the office and I hadn't smelt it because I was so nervous. Oh, no way. My sense of smell. No way. I didn't get the job. I was going to say, anyway. yeah, unless, you got, unless it was like dog walker, the job. But no, you probably wouldn't have got that job. So, so the theory is like Spider-Man, between it filtering out some of the non-essential stuff, also if he's distracted, like if he's worried about Gwen, yeah, he's not going to sense a guy coming up behind him to punch him or whatever. No, absolutely. And that's shown also in Spider-Man 2. This is another, re this is another reason why this theory works. Because he's uh, when his powers start to kind of shut down, is because he's stressed out. And so yeah. his powers start fading. So that, that would make sense. If he's in a really stressful situation, like he has to fight a giant lizard or whatever, then yeah, that would be going haywire. So it's kind of a not very useful sense. No. It shuts down when you're in danger, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks very much. Yeah. It'd be like if you're a race car driver, if you go over 100, you're like, your vision black goes black. You know what I mean? It's, no, that's great. Solid, man. There is also villains who like are immune to his spider sense, like, and that's sort of shown in I think Spider Man Three, where Venom is in, is invisible to Spider Man's spider sense. So that happens, yeah. but that's not for all villains. But yeah, no, that's a solid theory as well. I love it. Okay, plot hole number three. Oh, as we all know, Thor's hammer. Only those who are worthy can lift the hammer. Correct. Male or female, remember? Male or female. <laughs> we'll get very upset about that. <laughs> yeah, this theory kind of spins off what you and Mason talked about with that, <laughs> with the female cool. Thor. Yeah, but it says, um, 
nobody can lift it uh, except Thor or except whoever's worthy, right? Mm -hmm. However, there's moments where like Hulk or others can pick up Thor while he's holding the hammer. Yeah, yeah. And in particular, like you remember in the first Thor movie when mm -hmm. he and Loki are fighting on the, the Rainbow Bridge for the first time. Yeah. And he, he puts his hammer on top of Thor and he's like, ah, and he can't like get up. Oh, yeah, like pinned under it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but then in, then in Avengers, there's a bit where he, he, you know, he throws the hammer at Hulk, he can't lift it, and then he grabs a hammer and he jumps on Hulk's back and he's using the hammer to like choke him. Yep, yep. And it's like, well, shouldn't the same thing as what happened with Loki happen yeah. with Hulk Absolutely. there? Absolutely, If yeah. it's like on top of him, but it kind of doesn't count. Those hammer physics are like all over the place. It's the same with like Captain America's shield. Like you just, yeah. sh you just shouldn't think about it. There's even a scene in <laughs> Thor 2 where he hangs it up on a little coat rack. Yeah. Like a little. Oh, I hadn't even thought of that. Yeah. The coat rack is, is worthy. <laughs> Yeah, that's right, exactly. The coat rack is worthy. Well, now, now some people try to say maybe maybe uh, once you're worthy, it will, like, read the handprint like a fingerprint okay, sure. or something. But I, I don't think that's possible because, like, Loki could just cut his hands off and turn them into gloves. Yep. And, like, pick <laughs> <Sure>. up the... <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, some people say, like, maybe you need to actually touch it with your hand in order for it to count as lifting, but then you could just get a pair of tongs and pick it up. Well, that's right, <laughs> yeah. That's a really good point, yeah. So so but, what's the what's the theory? So the theory is... Like, you know how on the podcast you guys mentioned that a lot of people didn't like the female Thor because when Odin puts the spell on the hammer, he's like, uh, if he be worthy, he will possess the power of Thor. But you said he didn't need to specify what counts someone to be worthy or not. No. Like, the hammer just knows if someone is worthy and whether it's he or she. Exactly. Like, that inscription was relatively recent to the life of that hammer. Like, because yeah. it was already magic prior to him putting that on. It's just because that hammer, because he expected it to go to Thor, which it did. That's why yeah. he said he. That's why it's he. But anyway, sorry, go on. So, like, when he put, when he put the spell onto it, uh, like, there was unwritten rules that sort of transferred into the hammer of what qualifies as, as worthy, but sure. he didn't need to say that. But in the same way, he didn't need to specify what counts as someone trying to lift and wield the hammer. In the same kind of way, it just knows. Yeah. In the same way that it knows whether someone's worthy or not, it knows whether someone's trying to actually lift oh, and wield the hammer okay. or so it's it's kind of like, on a coat rack. Would you say it's like almost sentient, kind of like the way that the Lord of the Rings ring, whatever that's called, kind oh, of knows, kind of has the yeah. life itself? Is that what you're saying? Yes. <laughs> 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 i'll go with that yeah cool okay because it is magical yeah right? it's magical yeah it can do yeah it, it so it basically on a one-to-one -one basis of whatever it's hanging on it chooses where it sits basically sort of i, I like the way you put it because it's magical it's sentient so it, it knows the difference between someone worthy and someone not and it knows yeah. the difference between being lifted or you know hanging on something yeah absolutely so it knows like when it's being on the, the coat rack for example it's like this this coat rack isn't trying to wield the power of Thor. It's just <laughs> just wants to hang here. You know, it's just going to help. Yeah, out. yeah. And also, also, it knows where to find Thor whenever he reaches yeah, for it. That's right. Exactly. I mean, technically, that means you couldn't put it anywhere. Like you on that heli carrier, or whatever, on the coat rack, it should just fall right through it. If it was that's if true, it was yeah. so heavy. That, yeah, that's true. The heli carrier wouldn't lift off otherwise. So it, would, it should just it should just go to the center of the earth, like every time. Actually, come to think of it, Odin must have really thought this through. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> he, he prepared for all those contingencies. Sure, really. yeah. There's probably a deleted scene where it's like, and if it goes on a coat rack, that's okay. But <laughs> you can rest on Loki's chest, but can't go through him. Like, just the whole lot of... He's like writing all the rules on yeah. the scroll. And it's like, you know, miles long. He's like, yeah. rule number seven. <laughs> 7,800, yeah, you know. <laughs> if you're in a vehicle that lifts off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so that one passed as well. Absolutely. Okay, plot hole number four, and this one's topical. We all know Batman has his rule of not using guns. Yes, even though he has broken that multiple times, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> putting putting that aside, let's just say that he really believes that and he's never done that, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time as his, I'm doing air quotes, not using guns, even though he kind of does. Yeah. He doesn't like using guns, but he has a Batmobile that is pimped out with tons of like rockets, tons of grenade launches. Yeah, yeah. Like, all this stuff that is way more dangerous and can be way more lethal than a gun is, but he doesn't seem to have any problem with that. <laughs> no, like the, yeah, exactly. Like the Batmobile is obviously littered with missiles, but also like the, um, what is it? That bat cycle, whatever it's called. Oh, the bat pod, yeah. Bat pod, sorry. Yeah, it's got all that kind of stuff. And that plane 
thing, same thing. This obviously doesn't, theory won't apply to the Batman 89 Batman because his Batmobile has weapons. Oh, no, it's more well, the Batplane has weapons, but he just uses that to try and kill people. Like that's. In his original incarnation, he was a cop and he did carry guns. Yeah. Didn't he? Yeah, he was just so, a lunatic with a gun. And as Mason said, now, now he's a lunatic without a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Especially Frank Miller's writing. That's right, yeah. Boy, boy is he. Where it's like he does use guns. Yeah. The rule of no guns is not so much anything against the guns themselves. No. Because he uses guns in different forms and all that. It's more of an extension of his no killing rule. Exactly. But this, this plot hole topical because, you know, that new picture of the Batmobile came out and he's got this giant cannon on yeah, the roof. Yeah. And that Batman Arkham Knight that's coming out. They show There's pictures of that Batmobile. You've seen footage of it. And it's just missiles. And it's just, just <laughs> hammering into buildings and cars and whatever. So. Well, the theory, the theory is like the rockets in the Batmobile, they're not actually made to blow up the cars. They're actually made to flip them over onto their roof. Okay. Because every single time he shoots a rocket at a car, it doesn't blow up the car, it just flips it. Like the bad pot has like machine guns, but like he only uses it to like shoot glass before he rides through it and yeah, <laughs> stuff yeah, like that. Right, yeah. There's a bit where the tumbler goes through a median and it like shoots a grenade launcher and blasts it and drives through. Yeah. So it's saying that the rockets are specially made to flip cars and the other stuff he just uses to remove obstacles. Sure, yeah. Kind of in, in the same way of that he will use gun, but not to shoot someone. He might use it to trigger an explosive on the wall like in Dark Dark Returns. Exactly, yeah. You could still kill someone with a grapple gun. You, if you hit someone in the face with that from like two feet, you'd probably kill them. So you're saying he just, like, the weapons are all di designed specifically to mm. either flip a vehicle or just get something out of the way. Or disable it like or the disable, bat. Sorry. In, yeah, absolutely. Remember Dark Knight Rises? Uh, when all the cops are walking up, they're about to have the showdown with all the Baines guys. Yep. And one of those uh, military tumblers like turns the turns the gun is about to fire, and the and the bat flies in, and it shoots it with like this sparky electric thing. Yep. Yep. Which shorts it out. Yep. So again, it's like a non-lethal way. If he just blew it up, he'd kill whoever's in there. So I guess that rule extends to all things involving Batman. Yeah. They can be lethal, but he only uses them in a way that isn't lethal. So it's not so much no guns. Yeah, it's the no killing, comes out to the no killing thing. And that giant cannon on the new Batmobile, that's probably just to shoot Superman. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, just, <laughs> it wouldn't kill him. Yeah. Just not even Superman, just Clark at his office. Like he just rolls up and just shoots him <laughs> through the window. <laughs> this, is, this is more the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe than the comic universe. Yes. This is one that you suggested, yeah. Mr. Sunday. <laughs> yeah, because people always people always talk about it in like those how it sh how it should have ended videos. Yeah, the Marvel solo movies they all revolve. There's always a point about this in particular, which oh, is. Totally. Oh, sorry, I'll let you explain it. No, no, go for it. I was going to say yeah. So it's basically that. Where are all the other Marvel heroes in the Marvel solo movies? Yeah, and it's so obvious. Yeah, it's it is. Yeah, like in Winter Soldier, like can't Hulk come and help? Him yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, and it's the same way that like in comics or movies, villains are matched up with their superheroes appropriately. Like Green Goblin and Spider-Man are roughly the same strength, like give or take. But you wouldn't pit Green Goblin against Superman because Superman no. would just paste him. Like it's not even a competition. So it's the same <laughs> way that they kind of write, they they try and write it specifically. Yeah. So it's just jarring sometimes that where is everybody? Especially like with, um, with the end of Iron Man 3 where the president is being held hostage. Yes. And he's against like an entire army of extremist lava men. Yeah, and that's you're right. Like, he really could use some help. Yeah, here. absolutely. And that, that movie in particular, I felt really, you noticed that. And maybe that was because yeah. it was just after the Avengers. But like, he really needed help in that movie. And there was no way that the other members of the team could not have known. Like, it was on the news. Yeah, exactly. The They're not the beginner. president. Like, There's they had no him for you a while. Couldn't know that. I would say they had him enough, long enough, that it went from not um, daytime to nighttime. Like, mm. there, were, there were many hours in between that. Yeah. And I know that they were scattered across the world or whatever, but somebody would have been available. But even, like, maybe it's the hubris of Tony Stark where he, he wants to take it on by himself. Because even then when Rhodey saves the president and Tony Stark's like, okay, now beat it. I got this. I'm like, no, you really don't. You're in a lot of trouble. You killed Pepper Potts. You think you're, you're like, you you did. You're lucky she got injected with the, the extremists because she would have died. You thought she was yeah. dead. Like, it's, he's an idiot in that movie. He probably remembered, like, when he was fighting that guy on Air Force One. You remember he put his palm on his chest and just blasted a hole through him. And he's like, you know, come back from that. <laughs> Yeah. And then he and then he does like a much worse version of that to to Guy Pierce. Oh, he does do. <laughs> and he doesn't die. No, he doesn't. And you're it like, makes no sense. And then I think this is just going to turn into us like yelling about Iron Man three, you know, <laughs> <laughs> the plot of that. But there's also the bit at the end when Pepper kicks the missile into the guy into Guy Pierce and he explodes. And they're like, oh, he's dead. And then Tony Stark blows up all his suits. 
Like there is no, there's no reason that it was such an obvious of like, hey, we want we want people to think we're like women's lib. Yeah. So they just shoehorned it in, even though it made no sense at all. Yeah. And, but even women, like Comic Book Girl nineteen, she was like, she's like, I'm a woman, I'm for women's lib, and that's not female empowerment. That's fake female empowerment. Hey, right, right. Yeah. And, and it doesn't right, even yeah. make any sense from the perspective. Why would he survive that? Like, why wouldn't he survive that? Sorry, like he should have. If he gets a missile kicked in him, if he was covered in an Iron Man suit and it exploded and that didn't kill him, kicking a missile yeah. into him is not going to kill him either. Confused Matthew made a really good point about that too, where he said um, if Guy Pierce had been destroyed when the suit was encasing him, it would have been fitting symbolically as well because Iron Man up until that point, the, the Iron Man suit is like a symbol of his obsession. So it's his enemy wrapped in that symbol of his obsession and he's getting rid of both of them all in one. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it's like a clean slate and it would have been a fitting end for his whole, you know, journey over the course of that. But then they kept it going to have the thing with Pepper and it kind of yeah, wasted it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Well, there is, there is a theory which I'm arrogantly confident <laughs> yes, <you're laughs> answers all of this. <laughs> There's two parts to it. Part one is just kind of assuming that all of the phase two movies happen. This is a bit of a stretch, but if they're all happening at the same time or roughly okay. the same time. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they don't. Like, There's no like exact yeah. timeline, but I know Captain America is set like two years after. They're basically all set in real time after the Avengers, however many months. Oh, yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> doesn't matter. Kind of ruined, but, but anyway, yeah. it's like, like Thor... You know, because he's off in Asgard, you can kind of like yeah. exclude him because you're like, he's in a bubble, he's elf, he's not even on Earth, yeah. so it's cool for him not to show up. That's right. But if you if you assume that uh, Iron Man 3 and Winter Soldier happen at the same time, even though they don't, sure. but if they did happen at the same time, that would actually kind of work because you would think if Hydra saw or even helped to organize the president being kidnapped, then they would be, well, now's the time for us to like launch our thing and try to blow everything up. Sure. That's a stretch, but even if you do say that, that they're happening at the same time, it doesn't explain Hulk. No, because it Hulk doesn't. doesn't have any movies. He hasn't done anything. Yeah, <laughs> since the Avengers. Where is movie. he? What are you doing? What are you up to? Yeah, yeah. because Guardians of the Galaxy. And we're only talking about Phase Two movies here, aren't we? Like the the, the oh, original yeah. Phase Ones, you can say nobody else is there because they don't they haven't met or whatever. Yeah, they they probably but, don't know about yeah. each other. Thor, Thor: The Dark World takes place mostly on another planet, and when he does appear on Earth, he just pops r- pops up randomly on some spot on the Earth. So you don't yeah. know where it's going to be. Guardians of the Galaxy obviously is set in space, so there's going to be no crossover there. Yeah, I I would say yes, tentatively yes, they could take place at the same time. The thing with Hulk, here's the theory for Hulk. You know, whenever you send Hulk out on anything, there's always going to be a ton of collateral damage. Yeah. The theory is the only reason they let him go out and to help out in Avengers is because no matter how many buildings he smashes, no matter how much collateral damage he does, it's it's not going to equal the amount of destruction if Loki wins. Yeah. So they're like, fine, go for it, Hulk. Yeah. Go do your thing. Exactly. But if you send Hulk to, like, collect the Mandarin, you're going to lose, like, half a city. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, exactly right. It's not really worth it, you know. That's right. He's more kind of, he's more blunt force, like, if you need him to just set a path of destruction, he can yeah, do that. Yeah. If you give him, like, a, a like very specific task, get the president from down there, no, you don't send the Hulk because you'll just murder a bunch of people accidentally. Like, if you're against Thanos... Send Hulk out because it doesn't matter how much destruction exactly. he does. You know? Yeah, that's right. You, you, you need him in situations yeah, where he's just going to do as much damage as possible. Otherwise, no, you don't, you don't use him to take out Robert Redford, basically. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So what do you reckon? Do you reckon Plot Hole 5 is okay? Yeah, definitely, yeah. especially the Hulk bit. Yeah. Uh, that absolutely definitely makes sense because you wouldn't, you'd be very reluctant to call him. Well, that's five for five. Loved it. That's awesome, man. Yeah, wow. absolutely crushed it. No lambs to the slaughter or whatever metaphor you guys were using <laughs> in the last video. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much for being the host, dude. Oh, that was very awesome. welcome. I hope I didn't talk too much. I, I kind of just get on a rant. I try not to do this in real life. Like if somebody asks me about superheroes or whatever, I just go, I don't know. I'm not sure. Because I just go on these five-minute yeah. rants and like as people like slowly backing away. <laughs> yeah, and, and then you notice they're like not making eye contact less yeah. and less and they're just kind of looking over... You know, at that wall, and you're like, okay, I need to stop talking now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, where can people find you? I mean, I doubt I have any subscribers that don't already know you. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> but where, sure. where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at Mr. Sunday Movies on, uh, on YouTube and Twitter and Facebook. And I also got the, my, um, what is it? Podcast. That's what it's called. Weekly podcast that I do with a friend of mine, um, Nick Mason, uh, called The Weekly Planet. That's on iTunes and Comic Book Movie. And, 
and some other places and people seem to enjoy it so that's really good because it's that's probably the most fun thing that i that i do because it's, it's the minimal amount of effort because it's just talking so it's yeah <laughs> and good. minimal editing minimal exactly editing. yeah yeah so thanks everybody for watching and until next time i'll see you later